watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. Hey folks, if you missed a tour of my bug out moto van, click below to watch now or click on the link in the description section of this video. Hey guys, I'm stopped at a rest stop somewhere. But uh, I just wanted some of you guys ask me where I put my gear at. I put it right here in the wheel well because as you know I don't have a passenger seat here the motorcycle is here so I have plenty of room here where I'm at but let's get out of here I decided uh, I want to quickly take a piss I couldn't hold it to uh, head to the restroom so I, I brought my piss bottle and can you imagine I completely filled this container up with piss thought I was gonna run out of room but uh, handy dandy piss container but all right, let's get on the road, guys. All right, guys, here in my bug out van, living the life here. And I'll tell you guys, it's nice being back on the road again, but I'll tell you guys, you know, the toll prices are getting ridiculous. You know, I, I very first toll that I just paid $11 to ride on a fucking public road. It's ridiculous, man. Right now, I'm 183 miles deep. And, uh, but yeah, man, I hope there's not a lot of tolls with prices like that. That's, that's absolutely asinine. You know, our public, uh, you know, our taxes that we pay should cover the roads. They must collect an absolute fortune from all these people driving on this road, man. 11 bucks a pop? Shit. Anyways, just my little rant there. But yeah, guys, I'm living the life here. I'm absolutely loving this. I worked hard all summer long. Blood, sweat, and tears to build this bug out van. And I'll tell you guys, some of you guys asked me, man, was that a labor of love for you? No, it was not a labor of love. You know, I, I do not like manual labor. But I, it had to get done in order to attain my dream bug out vehicle. This is, uh, this bug out vehicle is, is like freaking probably six years in the making. I've been doing research and watching RV videos, van dwellers on YouTube, blogs, research books, all kinds of shit that, that helped me uh, come up with these ideas for my bug out van. And uh, the, like I said, the main purpose that I created this van was to in order to carry my motorcycle to be able to camp out with my motorcycle in the van and that provides so many advantages over carrying a, a trailer you know with a trailer you got to store it in your your house excuse me you got to put it in your driveway or backyard or whatever you know, I don't have the room for that shit also when you're driving with it it, be, it can be irritation with the sway you know from the wind and then you, you're limited to your parking spaces and where you can travel to. You always got to travel to the back of the parking lot and hope that's not, you know, backed up. Otherwise, you have no space to park because you got to take up multiple spaces with a trailer. It's just an irritation. And how do I know this? I trailered up. Uh, I used to own a Lexus SC400. And I, when I moved from Florida to Colorado, I trailered the car. And it was an absolute pain in the ass. The tire blew on the trailer. And we had to stop in some backwoods Alabama town. And, uh, and had to stay there for like six hours to wait for the guy to come and change the tire. Absolute pain in the ass. And uh, so, you know, I, there's no way in hell that I was dealing with the trailer. That was my uh, plan from the get-go. And, uh, you know, it's awesome to have your bike in the van with you. And uh, it's, it's because you don't have to worry about, you know, getting damaged if the trailer should detach or somebody stealing it out of your trailer. You're right here in the van with your motorcycle. So it's safe with you. And, uh, and also it's, it's safe from the elements. I can travel anywhere. I can go anywhere. I can park anywhere. I can get my van fixed anywhere, you know, unlike an RV, where an RV usually have to go to an RV service station, which can be few and far in between. 
you know, van, you can get this van fixed anywhere, you know, Firestone anywhere. And uh, also having a motorcycle in the van with me, should the, you know, I have any problems with the van, I can, you know, pull over and pull my motorcycle out, I got a second vehicle. So it's so many advantages of, of being able to camp out with the motorcycle in your van. And so far, fantastic. I have not slept in the van yet. This is my first, very first day of traveling on the road here. So far, 188.8 miles deep. And it's been great so far, no problems. Uh, the dog, this is the dog's first, actually second road trip. Hey, hey Skittles, Skittles, say something for the camera. Hey girl. She's whining a little bit, you know it's all new to her uh, but I she's been on a long road trip before because I purchased her in the uh, in the mountains of North Carolina the uh, rock Smoky Mountains I forgot the town of some little backwoods town and uh, so she's been on this trip but she was a puppy back then and it was absolute pain in the ass taking her because I didn't have a cage at that time she's all over the place shit in the car and everything but she's trained and uh, some of you guys asked me what breed she is. I did mention it in the last video. She's a Basenji, an African Basenji. They're from the Congo of Africa. They're fairly rare dogs. Uh, you don't see them that often, especially in Ohio. You don't, you don't see Basenjis that often. Uh, they're awesome dogs, but they do have drawbacks. Uh, the main pro for this dog, hey, cook, hey, Skittles, Skittles. Hey, hey Skittles. Uh, they don't bark. I absolutely hate barking dogs. I, I hate barking. Constant fucking barking. Neighbors get mad at you. It just irritates the hell out of you. So I wanted a dog that didn't bark. I've had Basenjis in the past. When I lived in Colorado, I owned two Basenjis. I had to sell them unfortunately because I was downsizing at that time. Uh, I, I sold my house and I was moving out of Colorado, so I sold them there. I, I miss them dearly. Great dogs. Um, they don't bark. They, they, my neighbors, uh, you know, in Colorado, they said, man, we love that dog. We lo I had two of them, uh, brother and sister. They said, man, we love that dog, those dogs. They don't bark. <laughs> and they don't stink. They have no dog odor whatsoever. I've only washed my dog two times, and the only time is because when she was a puppy, she shit on herself. But I can stick her outside all day long, bring her in, and she will not even smell like outdoors. She has a very pleasant scent. I actually like the smeller. She's a very good smelling dog, never odor. She, she cleans herself like a cat. Um, they don't eat a lot of food. And they, they are super high energy, though. That's a drawback to them. Super high energy, man. They can actually keep up with a Greyhound. They're that fast. And they, they're, they're one of the... Uh, they can change directions faster than any other dog. Or at least they're up there with any other dog that can change directions real fast at speed. Um, super energetic. If you leave them unattended, they will tear up. They will tear a shithole in your house if you leave them unattended. So you definitely have to crate them when you're not around. That's why you see me with the crate. That's why I got the crate here. Because this dog will tear up. But they're, they're good dogs. They're friendly dogs. Um, they're not little pussy dogs. I'll tell you that. Uh, these dogs, if they're, they feel threatened, they got sharp teeth and they they will bite and these dogs uh, you know these dogs are from the Congo of Africa they're, they're actually they have been used to hunt lions they have no fear in them whatsoever and uh, you know they they've been, they use them to trap big game in Africa and that this species has been around since uh, the Egyptian times so it's an old breed, an ancient breed of dog. There, if you look at pictures on the the, uh, the uh, pyramids in Egypt, you'll see pictures of them with the curly tail. Um, fantastic dogs, but they're not for everybody. So don't just go get one because they don't bark and don't smell. 
Um, you need to do your research and you have to learn. You can't train these dogs very well. You know, I've trained mine to go to the bathroom outside, but it's very hard to train these dogs on a scale of zero to 10 for trainability. These dogs are a zero. But anyways, getting back to the bug out van, yeah. So uh, I plan on breaking this trip into to two days as far as a road trip. I'm gonna do 10 hours a day, 10 hours tomorrow, and I'll be out in the Rocky Mountains. And uh, I'm gonna give you play-by-play -play video. Try to at least as best as I can of this complete trip, including, uh, you know, riding the trails with my Yamaha WR250R Dual Sport. Um, gonna be a lot of beautiful places we're gonna hit. Hopefully everything will go smoothly. And uh, like I said, I'll give you all, you know, video up-to-date videos, let you guys know how it is to sleep in this van with this setup, how it is to take a shower, wash up, uh, everything. How to cook, you know, cooking in the van, I'll do videos on that. So I'm gonna try to do as many videos as possible. I'm, I'm gonna try to keep the editing to a minimum because I don't have, uh, you know, I won't have a whole lot of time to sit there and edit. And also I have only 10 gigabytes of space with Verizon, I can always purchase more, but we'll see how that service works out. I don't know how it's going to, this is my, you know, I use it in my house and it worked great, but we'll see how it works in different locations. Supposedly it has good coverage, it's prepaid service. I paid $90 for 10 gigabytes of service and I had to pay $50 for that uh, wireless module so that uh, I can have access to the internet. I purchased that at Walmart. Uh, I'll include a link in that in the description section of this video. But hey guys, that's all I have for you. Just give me a little update here on the road. Hey guys, my best tank of gas, all highway here. It's the first time I ever rode all highway in this van, my bug out van, 400 miles. Still almost got a quarter of a tank gas left. Hey guys, finally stopped here. I put in uh, 715 miles. Here it's midnight. I didn't start out till late. I didn't leave till like 1.30 in the afternoon in Cleveland. But we're somewhere out here, I think in Iowa, somewhere. But I'm getting ready to park it here. Uh, this is at uh, America's Best Value Inn and Suites. And uh, I don't know, the area looks all right to park in overnight. It's got semis here. I should be able to blend in and whatever. There's a nice little grassy area over there where I took the dog to go to the bathroom. So we're going to camp out here. Hopefully it works out. If not, then we'll mosey on. Uh, you know, it should be okay though. But all right, I'm going to set up camp here. going to put the bed down, fix a meal, put the TV on, maybe see if I can catch any channels. Uh, get some sleep and then wake up and hit the road in the morning. Hey there, little girl. How you doing? Hey, sweetie. She's like, man, get me out of this damn cage. Well, pulled the TV out. Tried to do a channel search here. Not one single channel. That sucks, and I didn't bring any DVDs. The cameras, by the way, my night vision cameras are working excellent. As you can see here, I can see all four uh, corners of the van. First time using my four, Verizon 4G LTE prepaid service. As you can see here, it works perfectly. Okay, getting ready to cook a meal here with the butane burner. Just take the, uh, make sure that notch is up. There, facing up. Stick that in there. Like I said, that notch has to be up. And that on that slot close this locks it into place and uh, then you just click it to start it and I'm gonna make some turkey burgers here put these these turkey burgers here forgot to bring the condiments so it's gonna be a dry burger cut this off so you're gonna probably make sure to 
remove the uh, the canister here. Put the top on. So that way, and you, because you always want to store it standing up. So I do. These burgers came out good. Now I'm getting ready to wash up and shave at the sink here and see how that works out. Alright, I just did a full body wash here and I put the towel here to keep water from going on to the floor and on the side and that worked good. Um, yeah, it worked okay. Fully cleaned my body and uh, next time I'll try a shower this is all wet here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang that up on that uh, curtain rod up there and I'm gonna use this uh, fan to blow dry it so it'll be dry by tomorrow and it also provides circulation here in the van uh, but yeah did a full body wash even wash my ass how about that wash my whole body from from head from face to toe all right just waking up here about 9.23 in the morning, too late. <laughs> I, I didn't go to bed till like 3 in the morning though, because I didn't go to bed to, uh, didn't pull over till late. Kept driving and driving, got road hypnosis and just kept driving and driving and fucking driving. And, uh, but anyways, my very first night, overnight stay, successful. Uh, the bed is fine. The mattress is fine to sleep on, but I shouldn't have got this old cheap ass pillow, man. Pillow sucks. First thing, first store I go to, I'm getting a new pillow. Yeah, everything else is great. Uh, no problems. Just getting ready to uh, take the dog out for a walk and eat some breakfast. As you see, guys, I'm hearing some Hoboken country town here in Iowa. out in the middle of nowhere so first night is a success made some uh, some boiled eggs some Cheerios with almond milk and I have a banana and I ate a green apple so got to dump that in the garbage so far so good all right guys I'm getting ready to uh, go to the bathroom here for the first time so as you can see here I got space here to put the toilet and then when I'm done I'll put some kitty litter in there wrap up the bag and then put it in a ziploc where I'll throw it in the garbage hey guys I just took a shit and I'll tell you guys it's comfortable sitting on that and it shits fine but as you can see the dogs whining because it smells really bad in here Smells like a thousand farts in here, dude. You gotta air it out, man. Once I air it out, then I'll hit the road. But I'll wrap that up, throw it in the garbage. I I brought cat litter to put in there, but I don't have you don't have to go through all that shit, dude. Just wrap it up, throw it in the garbage, man. Nobody knows the difference. Anybody ask you what it is, just say it's dog shit, dude. Alright, getting ready to hit the road. Riding through Nebraska here. As you can see, I'm riding through pretty much nothing. <laughs> and, uh, man, just trying to stay awake here. Going through Nebraska. No disrespect to any Nebraskans out there, by the way. I'm sure you guys talk shit about Ohio as well. Because we don't have all that much going on in Ohio. But we do have LeBron James, the best NBA player in the NBA. And we will be going to the championships again, thanks to LeBron. But we got more to do in Ohio than out here in bumfuck Nebraska. There ain't shit out here, man. Camp chair with my doors open here. Getting ready to eat a couple of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch. I'm stopped out here in Omaha, Nebraska. Some. Welcome to Psycho Cruises Click the Go links. Just click on the pictures below to go to my recommended videos and my social media sites. Also, don't forget to visit my blog and store at psychocruiser.com. If you have any trouble clicking on these links, they are also provided in the info section of this video. Thank you and subscribe today. Check out my new channel where I talk about anything and everything, not just motorcycle related. Psycho Cruiser Motor Vlog.